Okay, we're back to epithelia, but this time we're talking about the glands. Epithelia is responsible for formation of the glands. So let's discuss this. A gland is one or more cells that secrete. One or more cells that secrete. A secretion is when you put a useful product out from a cell. Remember we had excretion and secretion in chapter 1. Excretion is putting a, a wasteful product out, secretion a useful product, like a hormone or something. The two major types of glands, and I'll introduce a couple of more in ANP too, but the two major types of glands are exocrine glands and endocrine glands. Exocrine glands and endocrine glands. An exocrine gland secretes this product through a duct and onto a surface, like your sweat glands and oil glands. Secretes this product through a duct and onto a surface. An endocrine gland doesn't have a duct. So when it secretes this product, it leaks into the interstitial fluid and ultimately into the bloodstream and is carried long distances, like testosterone, insulin, and so forth. So the two major types of glands are exocrine and endocrine. The epithelia has it assist in the formation of both. Okay, here's here's gland formation. What happens is, remember we said in in, in embryology migration differentiation. Okay, epithelial cells here start to migrate down into connective tissue. Epithelial cells start to migrate down into epithelial cell, in ep, into a connective tissue. Epithelial cells start to migrate down into connective tissue. Here would be them doing that. Okay, but remember migration and differentiation. In this case, the migration occurred, but the cells started to differentiate. Some of the cells differentiated into ductal cells, the lining cells, the duct, and some glandular cells. The glandular cells are the ones that are going to ultimately secrete. They've differentiated into that. So the secretion, like sweater oil, will move up through the duct and onto the surface. So an exocrine gland secretes through a duct and onto a surface. All right. The same thing occurred here. But the difference is, when this occurred, first of all, the migration down, this is endocrine, occurred in areas that have a lot of blood vessels, very vascularized, very vascularized. This is endocrine. And then what happens is the cells that were going to form the duct, as they did in exocrine, undergo, uh oh a term you should be familiar with, apoptosis. A-P-O-P-T-O-S-I-S. -P -P Remember, study back. Program cell death. See, we're starting to use terms now. It underwent apoptosis. So the duct degenerated. Therefore, this gland is off to itself in the midst of the connective tissue. So when it secretes, it goes into the connective tissue and ultimately is picked up by blood vessels and carried long distances. So you can see that both started out the same way. Both started out the same way, but this one here lost its duct. This one lost its duct. Okay? But both started from epithelia. Okay? So endocrine glands are ductless glands. What they secrete is a hormone. Hormone stands for signal to carry in, because you're carrying a signal. And they can get into the bloodstream or even the lymphatic circulation, which we'll talk about in ANP2. But it goes long distances, endocrine glands. What I'm interested, though, in this chapter is not to discuss endocrine glands. There's a whole chapter on that that's really... I'm going to mention it in ANP1 when we do certain uh, other, other chapters, but I'm interested right here in exocrine glands. Exocrine glands are more numerous than endocrine. They secrete products into ducts and so forth. 
So let's have a discussion on exocrine glands secrete through a duct. How to classify an exocrine gland. So that's where we're now. Number one. Is the exocrine gland unicellular or multicellular? Which means, is it one cell secreting or is it several cells secreting forming the gland? Okay. So we're going to go, we, we, we'll, we'll do that and come back to this list here. Is the exocrine gland unicellular or multicellular? The only unicellular gland, unicellular exocrine gland in the body is something called a goblet cell. Goblet cells are glandular, simple columnar epithelial cells, which sole function is to secrete mucin. Now, here comes something I want you to know. All of you have heard of mucus, but cells do not secrete mucus. They secrete a glycoprotein known as mucin, a glycoprotein. Glycoprotein, your chemistry section, is a carb molecule hooked to a protein. And when the mucin is secreted, when it goes to the top, when it goes to the top, the epithelia, on the surface, it mixes with water. When mucin mixes with water, it forms mucus. When mucin mixes with water, it forms mucus. The more water, the less sticky, the less viscous. So the amount of water determines the viscosity. But again, goblet cells secrete mucin which can form mucus after it mixes with water. That is the only unicellular gland we have in the body. Here's an example of that. This particular cell would make its substance down here and then package it in vesicles. Package it in vesicles. Now, go back to your cell chapter. Since you're going to package, and this is and this is a glycoprotein is going to be used outside the cell, Remember, it would be made on a fixed ribosome. See, it's where everything comes back. It would, then you'd have the rough ER. Then you'd have to have a Golgi. Remember, everything made on a fixed ribosome, which would be on the rough ER, will ultimately go through the Golgi to be packaged for secretion. See, this is where it comes back. Okay. However, most of our exocrine glands are multicellular multicellular glands okay so now we are doing a description and a classification of multicellular exocrine glands okay the first thing we're going to say when we classify a multicellular type is to look at the duct examine the, the duct the key is does the duct branch or is it one duct straight to the gland. Does it branch and go into several glands, several branches, or is it just one? Okay. If it's just one duct and it doesn't branch, it's called a simple duct. If it does branch, it's called a compound. So let's look here. All right, right here would be a simple duct. A simple duct. Now see, these are the ductal cells right here. Right here is still a simple duct because even it's still one duct and all of this, when you see this color, that's gland. Here's a compound. See how the duct is branching? See the more tannish yellow is the duct cells and the more reddish is the gland part. So in other words, this, this right here is a simple. It's one duct because that one duct goes into three of these. Right here, though, is branching. It's branching. Okay? So, does the duct branch or doesn't branch? Okay, we go next. What is the shape of the gland part? What is the shape of the gland part? Does it resemble a tube, tubular? Does it resemble a coral tube? So, we go back. We will go here. When we go there, what we see is, this is more of a rounded. That's alveolar shape alveolar shape right there okay this is more tubular shaped see that's the the gland part okay so we have different shapes so what have we said does the duct branch and what's the shape of the gland the third and last thing how do the cells behave when they discharge their product 
How do the cells behave when they discharge their product? Does the cell, we'll start here, does the cell merely use excitosis to discharge the product and not destroy any of the cell? If that's the case, we call that a merocrine secretion, or some authors call it an ecrine. Merocrine or ecrine. Let's go here. Merocrine. What happens is, here's the gland, here's the gland part, secre secretory part. See, the, the, the secretory products are being packaged in vesicles and merely move up. But none of, and here's exocytosis, showing little pictures, the cell itself is staying intact. That's a merocrine secretion. Merocrine. And see, very little chance of clocking the duct because all you got is secretion coming up. Example, sweat glands on most of the body region. On most of the body region. Not, okay. Next one. Does the, gl the gland cell load all its vesicles in the top of the cell and then break off the tip of the cell. We call that apocrine secretion. Here's apocrine. You've loaded in, and now you're cracking the top off. Now this part will regrow back, but you're cracking the top off. So you're sending this up. Now think, with this coming up, there's more going through the duct at one time, so it's easier to clog up this. Because you send it bits, and then when it gets up here, this will disintegrate, and you'll still have the secretion because the gland part, these these pieces of cell will disintegrate. Increased chance of clogging the duct due to increased amount of product trying to go through. These would be an example of sweat glands under the arms and other areas. Okay. Mammary gland, wax gland in the ear. Strange, a wax gland in the ear is actually a modified sweat gland. You would think it's a, a oil gland. Okay. Because you, you, that's happening, this is how you can get it clogged up and get these things. So people that use roll-on deodorants or certain things that can clog up that duct and get this condition called hydratinized serpentiva. Then we'll try to tell the person, don't use that type of deodorant so you can free up that duct opening. Okay? Go to the next one. Holocrine. Holocrine. Does the gland cell fill up its entire cytoplasm with vesicles, then secrete the whole cell, sacrifices itself? Okay? Here's holocrine, the whole cell. The gland cell fills up its entire site, then the entire cell is secreted. See, the cell's coming up. And I think, because you're bringing all that up, it's very easy to clog that duct. Very easy to clog that duct. Holy crap. What does that? Your all glands, your sebaceous glands. That's the reason I'm showing you here with this acne or bubonium cyst, which could be in the eyelid down there. Because you're bringing this up and it could clog the duct. Now, this doesn't listen to homeostasis. So, if the duct gets clogged, then these guys still keep coming up. So, it starts to get clogged up even more and then it'll start to inflame around the area of the skin. We'll talk a little bit about that when we put this in play in the skin chapter, which is actually the next chapter, chapter 5. So that's what we're looking at. Okay, so here's the review. Cell stays intact. That's the merocrine. Tip breaks off. Apocrine and entire cell sacrificed holocrine. So that gives a good, good understanding of the epithelia. Okay, thank you.